Welcome to Soma Nature. As a beginner field recorder, I'm always looking at tons of information and products. The rabbit hole is never ending. And if you're like me, some of those products are way out of budget. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the photos and steps I took to make a DIY sound ambient sampling system, or for short, SAS. If you're not familiar with the SAS, it is a pseudo-binaural device used to replicate human hearing. In reading blogs and watching other YouTubers, I noticed silver fill recorders using drop rigs and tree ears, which led me to doing research on loom microphones, which were not available at this time. Some more digging led me to the Clippy Primo EM272 microphone sold by MikeBooster.com. The EM272s have a low self noise and seem to be the go to microphone for many people using binaural setups on a budget. I purchased a set that was already wired, but MikeBooster.com has several options for buying these mics. After the mics came in, I started to Google more about designing a SAS. And I have to give a big shout out to AcousticNature.com for having such a great article on explaining his process and materials for making a lightweight and easy to set up SAS. I will leave a link to his blog in the description along with a few other articles that I found helpful and gave me ideas. I started off making a smaller SAS design that I tested that I will show at the end of the video along with a few audio samples. For the second build, I'm going to show my photo process and steps which were closer to Acoustic Nature's design. I used a few of his steps then incorporate a few of my own modifications that I was explain when going through the photo slide. Also, all the materials that I used are listed in the video description. Similar to Acoustic Nature, I used the yoga block with the same cutting pattern that is shown on his blog and is pictured here. I found my yoga block at the 5 Below store for 5 bucks, but there are packs of 2 for around $10 on Amazon. The block is 9 by 6 by 3 inches. First was to find the center point of the long side, which is 4.5 inches, then measured out from the top 1.5 inches on each side of the center point. The cut angle from the bottom chamfered corner to the end point of the 1.5 inch mark we made on each side should be around 46 degrees. I used a speed square to check the degree and drew a line to connect these points. Next I took the block over to my bandsaw and cut along the line. If you don't have a bandsaw, a hacksaw will work just fine. Next, I found the center point of each angle side and used a drill press with a 13 30 second spit to drill a hole that was about three fourths of an inch into the foam. You could also use a power hand drill here if you don't have a drill press. The mics are 10 millimeters in diameter, so a 13 30 second spit is just a hair over 10.3 millimeters. I wanted a way to have access to the mics easily to add or remove them. So on the back, I marked half an inch on each side made a mark, and then went back with an exacto knife at a 45 degree angle and started cutting out an opening. This worked okay, but I still ended up having to slowly work one side open and cut the middle section on the back side to release the rest of the foam. Once I had a door, I went back to the drill and started to bore out a channel from the back down to the side hole. The channel was about an inch and a half wide. That way I had plenty of room to work the mics into the hole. On a side note, when boring out the channels is to remember to go slow, keep cleaning out the holes to see where you are, and drill parallel with the outside angle so that you're not drilling straight down and coming out the side accidentally. Then on the bottom, I also made a hole with the 13 30 seconds bit so that I could run the plugs and wires out. Since I didn't order any mics with protective capsules, I quickly made my own using some marker caps. The ones I had laying around were around 12 millimeters in diameter, and again using the 13 30 seconds drill bit, I made an opening at the top. I also made a slit down the side of each marker cap that made it easier to position the mics flush with the top. Then I added some foam to the hollow cavity and taped them together. Adding the caps helped to have a more secure way to put the mics into the side holes. Now I can add the mics, run the wires through the bottom hole, and seal the back with a piece of masking tape. For the nose, I used a hot glue gun and a piece of solid noodle foam that I cut flat on one side. Then wrapped and glued a piece of foam sheet to the outside, and then glued the whole thing to the front of the main foam block.
for the windscreen basket, I also took inspiration from acoustic nature and used a wire clothes hanger that I had laying around the house. I cut and bent some of the pieces so they look like this. Then I add duct tape to the area where the wire would enter the foam and poke the wire through the tape in the foam to create a hole. I also connected the two wires where they met in the front with duct tape. After thinking about the holes in the foam where the wire goes, I went back and found some drywall ingers that were just a hair over the diameter of my clothes hanger wire. The wire was 0.047 inches in diameter and the drywall anchors for a number 2 screw were 0.086 inches in diameter. I secured the drywall anchors into the foam with some hot glue. This seems like it will help eliminate any tearing of the foam. I also wanted to keep water off the mics. Even with the windshield, I didn't want the risk of water dripping down and onto the mics. I just bought some plastic yarn canvas from the store to make a blimp for my shotgun mic and also picked up some round plastic canvas pieces along with some Hyper D 300 waterproof fabric from ripstopbytheroll.com for some dry bags that I made the other day. I took one of the round plastic canvas pieces, cut it in half, and then bent each one of those in the center. Next I cut a piece of the Hyper D 300 to the size of the plastic canvas halves and then used the hot glue gun to attach the fabric to the plastic canvas. Next I marked out on the foam where I wanted the slits. And with an X-Acto knife I made the slits and then glued the edge of the plastic canvas and stuck it into the slit. And I also added a good amount of glue to the top and bottom where the canvas and the foam met. For a tripod mount, I used a thin piece of plastic, scored it with some sandpaper, and then glued it to the bottom of the main foam piece, making sure to get it somewhat centered. Next I had this metal hot shoe nut that came with some camera attachment, and then I glued the tripod mount to the plastic. I felt like the plastic gave the tripod mount a little bit more stability. You could easily use a quarter inch nut or a T-nut with a 20 count thread if you cannot find the hot shoe nut like the one that I used. If you're using a T-nut, you could probably skip the part where I glued the thin plastic and just mount the T-nut directly into the foam, since they do have a serrated edge. I will leave links in the description to some hot shoe nuts that I found on Amazon and eBay. After the mount was secured, the sass was complete. Like acoustic nature, I found a toboggan hat to throw on for a windscreen. I might actually make one out of fur as well to see which one will do better in the future. Here are a few complete photos and video clips of the sass. After the video, I'll show the first sass that I made out of foam floor tiling, and there's also some sound samples at the end.
Here's the first house that I made with foam floor tiling that was sitting around the house. The dimensions were a bit smaller, and I only made it 6 inches wide. There's a little bit more gluing and cutting out all the shapes and angles to get everything to fit. I won't go into details about this build, but just add some reference photos here if you're interested in trying a different alternative. Thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe. Happy recording!